How you doing, folks? Uh, I want to talk today. This is more of like for more for beginners uh, getting started. Uh, to kind of go over, you know, the makeup of a traditional bow. Uh, it's fairly simple. This one here is a little bit more. It's a three-piece takedown, so the limbs detach. Uh, you'll have a one-piece, a two-piece, which breaks away from the handle. Uh, to have it in two pieces, this just the limbs come off and I can keep the same riser. But uh, basically I'm gonna start out with, and I'm gonna give you some, this may help with some tuning tips with your arrows. Uh, you know, to start with, you know, knowing your shelf cut, you know, a lot of them, a lot of your bows will have a shelf, whether it's cut past center, cut to center, eighth inch before, or even not even where you're shooting off your hand. So. Uh, Knowing your where your shelf is cut is vitally important, and also your strike plate, which is on the side here. Mine's a calf hair, and it's barely thin. You can kind of kind of see that. So it's it's not real thick. And then you got what people will call a rug. Your bare hair rest. This is a leather plate, leather uh, shelf rest, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I just call it leather plate uh, on the bottom of your shelf and you got your string uh, this is a 16 strand fast flight and and then you got your brace height I've got a, a quick quiver great northern quick quiver attached and it attaches to the limb limb bolts itself uh, or the washer and uh, one thing I can kind of tell you there's only a few things that you can tune on a bow excuse me and which will be your side plate thickness if you're really close and your arrows are just flying off say left or right and they're flying you know barely good no wobble and you can adjust your side plate thickness and this is a very thin one I even got something thinner than this and which is uh uh, it's kind of like a velcro it's felt so felt's a lot thinner and even thinner than this so this seems to be working really well uh, and also you can work you know just by changing about ready to jump the gun too much but by changing your side plate can put you you're trying to find basically center of your your center shot basically where your arrow will fly straight to where you're looking at. I have done this. I've tinkered with it here past a little while, past a little bit uh, in the past couple of weeks, I should say. And you know, trying to go over my tune. Why, you know, my my first 3D shoot coming off after everything's opening back up, I shot like below 100. I shot like an 87. So I started going back through my form and my equipment. I mean as far as my tuning and everything else. Uh, so my arrows stay the same. I mean, I'm using a standard 5 16 diameter arrow. And uh, I just kind of played around with the thickness of my, of my side plate. By doing that, I put Velcro on this, I put this on it. I haven't tried the felt, this is pretty thin. So it, this seems to be working the best right now. So, uh, but your string thickness can have a lot of play in your arrow tune and your brace height. I mean, if your brace height's way too low, way too high, you know, your arrow's affected by that. And it's, you can tune, you know, it's usually like the last steps of tuning that I do is using the brace height, but it does work. It may get you some, it may not get you anything. And even the string puff silencers where they're at, you know, up on the string. I learned this from Jeff Cavanaugh, so it's not my idea. What he told me one time was try to move my my string puffs down or up the string and see how it affects, because the more you come down, the slower, slower the string will come in, and higher up, the faster it'll move. So it may not be a whole lot, but it does, sometimes it does might help you uh, but you can also play around with 
arrow diameter. Um, my bow's cut past center, so a 5 16 does pretty good without having a real thick side plate. So those little things right there, knowing what you can use to tune your arrow to get it to impact where you want it. Uh, I mean, if you're totally out of spine, uh, if you're over spine or under spine, that's not, none of that's gonna really help you too much. Uh, you still need to be properly spined. And, and also I would suggest, you know, getting a test, make up your own little test kit. Uh, most of my bows are right around between 40 and 50 pounds. So I'm pretty much a 500, 500 spine arrow all the way across the board. And I've had some crazy instances where a 145 pound bow liked a 400 spine arrow. So it's, you know, again, with wooden bows, you're dealing with, uh, if they're handmade, they're not made the same, exact same from every bow to the next. So that's what makes it kind of unique. So it, it, a calculator is a good, you know, spine calculator, Three Rivers got a spine calculator. It'll give you a good idea, but it's not, you know, dead on yeah for some people i got one guy he'll swear up and down by it but uh it's basically you know just gives you a suggestion and an idea uh, and and even spine charts uh it just depends on your sh the shooter uh your knock height has a lot to do with with it too uh, i use a bear shaft to find my knock height and also you know, keeping everything from, if I'm using feathers, which I got trad veins on these, so moisture don't really affect me any. Uh, when I shoot feathers, I make sure it, the bear shaft and the flat shafts are impacting the same height, and I may have to adjust later on spine just to get it dialed in a little bit more, but those are a few things on the bow. If you understand how your bow's made up and what's on it, and what you can change to help you tune. This is probably the best way is your side plate, air diameter. Uh, if you're just stuck on a, say if you're cut to center and you wanna just shoot a 5 16 diameter arrow, then you may uh, need just a slightly, a little bit more weaker arrow to be able to, to fly around that, around the shelf and be able to hit where you want to, where you're looking at or where you're aiming. So, sorry. And uh, and that's just a few things. If you understand, you know, what's on your bow, what you can adjust, uh, and it'll kind of help you along with that, with the tuning process instead of scratching your head. It's all the arrow, but you can do some things to the bow to aid in your arrow tuning. So I hope this will Little video helps, little tips there. And I uh, hope y'all have a great day and God bless.